This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring retired FBI special agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. Let's take a look here uh, at uh, some of the closing arguments from Jackson. Uh, this is talking about uh, John O'Keefe's health data on the uh, Apple Watch. Let's take a listen and we'll talk on the other side. His phone, and that represents a huge problem for the Commonwealth. It shows that he took 80 steps and ascended or descended three flights of stairs at that time. And that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? It matches, walks into the house, goes directly to the basement. There's your 80 steps and your descending flights of stairs. The big problem for the Commonwealth is he wasn't outside at the car ascending and descending stairs, wasn't climbing on top of the car. So they'll tell you, wait, 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 don't look at the, the Apple Health data, look at this other thing called Waze. But Rick Green explained that if you apply the three minute offset that is built into that monatomic time, it aligns perfectly. They don't want you to see that. They don't want you to pay attention. They want you to look the other way. But even more importantly, at approximately 12.32 a.m., someone holding John's phone takes another 36 steps and travels 25 meters. Why is that so important? Because by 12.32 a.m., Karen Reed was gone. She had already left the location. She left at 12.30. Trooper Garino told you that Karen Reed's phone connected to John's Wi-Fi at what time? 1236. It is undisputed in this case that it's a six minute drive on a good day from 34 Fairview over to One Meadows. She was gone by 1230 and John's phone was taking 36 steps and logging 25 meters at 1232 after she'd left. So don't be fooled. John walked into that house, after which Karen drove away, and the scientific data all prove it. Still going hard on this, he went into the house theory. I know I have my ideas of how this could have happened without him being in the house, but what are your thoughts on that? He didn't go in the house. Every single witness said he didn't go into the house, and I don't believe they're all lying. Mark Twain said if, you, if two people need to keep a secret, they can definitely do it if one is dead. Uh, you're asking all of these individuals all this time to just continue with this conspiracy, this lie. Uh, secondarily, his GPS data from his phone is, is so much more of a precise indicator uh, than the health data. You can take your Apple health data watch and be in your car and ascend and descend uh, hills. And if anybody uh, listening has been to Canton, there's all these little hills going to his place and mm -hmm. you descend and you ascend. And that's what I believe that health data recorded. In terms of his expert green, expert green was turned upside down by the prosecution uh, because he got so confused about the 227 time frame. Mm -hmm. The 227 time frame that unequivocally occurred at 623 in the morning, not 227 as has been kind of the, um, you know, the stronghold yeah. of their position crumbled because green just doesn't have the expertise that the prosecution witnesses had. Sure. Sure. Uh, and I, I was talking about this the other day uh, with some guests. There's a big difference between what you get on your uh, Apple phone in terms of health data uh, versus a watch. And I believe this data did come from a phone, correct? So uh, I thought, no, well, the, there's two different data points. One is from his actual cellular phone data yes, yep. from the phone that was found underneath him, mm -hmm. which I believe he stuck in his pocket because yeah. I think he had two glasses in his hand. Sure. Um, so in any event, there's that phone data and then there's the, the uh, watch data, mm -hmm. which I, I thought it was from the watch. Yeah. That's how I recall it. It's, it. it's There's a huge difference, it seems, between the, the two. I mean, ju just from my own life experience in terms of, of what, how accurate it, it can be. Uh, the phone, not as accurate as the watch. It, it, this is always connected to you. seems to have a little bit more. The phone itself, I've had it say, you know, up and down stairs when I know I'm not going up and down stairs quite frequently. Um, and in terms of the movement uh, as well, 
I look at that and go, okay, if he was knocked over, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going in the line that he's just tipped over and he's done, you know, after, after the vehicle strike or, or if he slipped or whatever happened there, probably get up, got up, walked around quite a bit, tried to walk it off, tried to figure it out, fell again. Um, there, there seems to be a lot of logical explanations here for this, that, that point in that direction more so than he actually went into the house. Is it a mistake that they continued to push this narrative, even in closing arguments, that somehow he went into the house. I know it creates some reasonable doubt, but it just, there's nothing that that points to it being accurate. I think it was a mistake um, because the data points don't prove it. And back to your point, and I just wanted to make sure I'm clear because yeah. I might not be being clear here. There's the cellular device and then there's the health data application. Mm-hmm. And what I'm saying is that application is inaccurate yeah. when it's compared to the movement of a cellular phone. Sure. I think we're on the same page yeah. there, but I wanted to make sure that, sure. you know, that was clear. I think it was a mistake for them to keep pushing that, but they had to for this third party culprit mm-hmm. narrative to work. Um, I think it fell flat. Want to listen ad free? Want advance access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.